Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gilbert Solis. This is Ricardo Lazzo, uh, Giancarlo Zdrada, and Angel Mendoza, and we're Team 11. And so first of all, I'd just like to thank everyone for being here. We're all really excited to be at this point in our academic careers. So we want to introduce to you the Humanoid Rehabilitation Project. Basically, this project is um, Design is it's a robot designed to facilitate treatment, pediatric rehabilitation for children with autism or Down syndrome or other cognitive disabilities. Um, children who might not respond to traditional forms of rehabilitation. Basically, um, our primary focus is going to be creating a robotic platform that can be changed, customizable, and will serve as a visual model for simple, basic rehabilitative uh, movements and exercises. We also need that model to function as a surrogate between the child who may not like interacting with strange adults and the therapist who needs to give them medical attention. So a couple advantages to using a robotic platform are that um, children, even your typical healthy child, is not as responsive to verbal instruction or things like that. Uh, children tend to learn from visual models, especially at very early ages. So this robot is something that they can physically see and model. Um, and again, that, that intermediary focus, serving as a surrogate between that therapist and that child. During the course of our research, um, we found a couple platforms that are relevant to our field of study. So um, firstly, the Poppy Project is one that um, is focused on creating a humanoid robot that moves realistically. But um, it has no emphasis being placed on this particular application. Um, Autobot is a small robot that does have a focus on creating interaction for children who have these disabilities. It's just a small like uh, device that allows some sort of social interaction to occur. And then Cherry Project is actually a sub-project of the Poppy, and it's basically the upper torso of the robot, and um, it's just designed to have conversations with children who are isolated in hospitals. Um, so there was no platform that really directly addressed this, and uh, that's kind of where we leave this. So based on all this previous consideration, we came out with a mechanical engineer -like solution. Um, so let me introduce Hector, the human companion technology for rehabilitation. <laughs> this is Hector on the first stage of our first prototype. It was really helpful during our learning process because none of us were familiar with the 3D printing technology that, that's the manufacturing technology that we used to develop Hector. Um, also for the, it tells us how to work with servos because we have no experience working with them. How to work with LCD displays, which is what we use for the eyes. Um, even though Hector on the first stage was really helpful, uh, based on the, on the previous semester feedback, we decided to change our prototype because one of the considerations was like the wires were exposed. Um, it wasn't that uh, safety. The servos were really weak. Yes, but they have plastic ears and they break really easily and the uh, overall looking is not really friendly it's kind of intimidating so we made a drastic <laughs> <laughs> change on our design so we came out with Hector 2.0 <laughs> um, <laughs> in comparison with the previous design Hector 2.0 uh, has more, more room for the wires so it has a, a cleaner finish uh, also the structural design is like tougher um, and it's more friendly with <laughs> um, Some of the considerations during the design process was the kinematic, one of the most important. We, the way we programmed the servos was um, to imitate the actual joint movements of a child. For example, an average elbow movement is, the range of an average elbow movement is 150 degrees. So what we did was we programmed the corresponding servos to have the same range of motions and that's, we, we did the same process on all the servos to have an overall more child-looking movement. It is important to mention that we want this project to be an open source, to have everybody the opportunity to have access to this project. So we start our design from the scratch. We came out with all the, the components. We decided every single component of this project. Um, all the STL files, the CAD drawing, the SOLIDWORKS files are available online, so anybody can have access to download it and work with Hector. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, 
So we are using 3D printing technology to work with Hector. Some of the advantage of this technology is that all the components are scalable. As we show in that picture, that's the right leg. If we um, want to have like um, a different leg on every component, you just scale it and, and have an actor on different dimensions to appeal. Maybe a child might have a, another um, disability and he might look more like friendly, attractive to, to Hector if you, you notice that Hector has the same disability. One of the big um, like advantages of this is that identification for the child. So that's why we really emphasize being able to modify him. So different children with different proportions, and they might have different um, issues. And so having something that looks like them is really going to be beneficial. All right, so some of the design components. Uh, well, first of all, the microcontroller. We, uh, we had in mind using the uh, Raspberry Pi. However, we do not require using the Raspberry Pi, so we decided to go with the Arduino Mega. The Mega has uh, 54 digital input and output pins. So since we're not running the battery through the uh, Arduino, because the Arduino can only run up to three servos at a, at a time, we decided to, uh, to get an external battery and use the, uh, the Arduino Mega. Now, as Angel mentioned, the uh, design changed. Well, you can see it changed by a lot. We uh, also the design became a little more heavy. We decided to change the servos. Now, for the prototype, we use the uh, the SG90. Now, those SG90 are uh, plastic gears, and <coughs> even though they're light, they do not give you enough power to move uh, the new the latest design. So we went for the MG996R. Uh, these are um, metal gears, and they provide more than enough torque to um, to run Hector. We are still operating them. Even though they have a maximum of six volts, we are operating at five volts. And it still gives us more than enough work to, uh, to create the movements. Now, in the uh, first design, we use the uh, MV102 to power the servos, which works perfectly. However, when we updated to the uh, newer servos, we ended up burning the MV102. So we decided to go with the uh, Adafruit. <laughs> the Adafruit is mostly, it's, it's meant for a Raspberry Pi. So we had to uh, download a library and we had to, um, to change the code a little bit to make it work with the Arduino. Now here we have some of the eye gestures. Um, he can be very friendly with the eye gestures. We try to keep it a little bit limited because some of the kids that are going uh, treatment, they might not take the, uh, they might not react uh, in a friendly way to the gestures because maybe they don't understand them. Overstimulation is also a big issue, so we have to kind of minimize that. Yeah. And um, we also try to be uh, some uh, MP3 sound module that might be for future work where we can actually uh, make Hector talk, uh, maybe uh, songs while play songs while it makes certain movements. Now here we have the uh, the exploded view of the arm, showing more or less the assembly. The arm there um, is using only three servos, uh, one at the shoulder, two at the shoulder, and one at the elbow. Later we decided to add another one. Um, the right leg also uses uh, four four servos five with the one in the hip that is not showing that picture, but the assembly together uh, creates a five uh, degree of motion per leg, so it will be 10 overall in the, in the legs. Uh, Hector, when we made the torso, we decided to, uh, to use it to store everything that we have. So as you can see, it's big enough to keep the, Ar the Arduino Mega and the PCA. Um, as far as the battery goes, we, uh, we haven't we decided not to do a battery for now and leave it for the future work, even though a battery could fit there. We also have the, the head is a hollow <coughs> We can keep some, um, uh, like the PCA could go inside the head. So for our component estimate, uh, as you can see, we bought multiple pieces. We bought the uh, Omega, the LCD, sound module servos. We also bought a gyroscope for future works, wiring, wiring protection, um, the battery, as you can see, we're using a 12 volt battery. Um, filament, um, like I said, for uh, wiring servos. Well, another reason why we decided to use the Mega is because Arduino is an open source. So you can find uh, no cost or um, other microcontrollers are actually a lot cheaper. They we function use, exactly the same. And exactly the same way, a quarter of the price. Mm -hmm. So for our manufacturing analysis, um, we pretty much said $6 an hour for 3D printing. Uh, Angel was lucky enough, he purchased a 3D printer and we did all the 3D printing at home. 
Um, as you can see, the chest, the head, the back are pretty much our most uh, extensive hours. So with that, we, we range around that price. This is for our pricing. Um, if you have a better 3D printer, a faster 3D printer, more spacious, you can print multiple pieces at the same time. You can cut down your price at almost to half of it. So the price is up to you. It could decrease. Um, as you can see, everything is going together. <laughs> Essentially, this is a rough estimate of where we took the total printing time and um, I summed it together and at the cost of $6 an hour is what we would expect if we outsourced the printing to a different shop. Whereas we were lucky enough to print it at home, we didn't actually spend $950. So again, just a rough estimate. And um, one of the big emphasis, emphasis of, of this project was creating a humanoid robot within a certain price range. There are lots of platforms that already exist that could be programmed to do exactly what we're doing, but like you can see, they're pretty expensive. Um, cost prohibitive to many lower income families or people who just don't have the money to, to spend on that. So um, an objective here was to kind of find like a, a nice balance, somewhere where we sacrifice functionality, but um, we lower the price and still maintain enough um, capability to perform the function. All right, so this is uh, the functionalities that we programmed it to do. As you can see in the bit here, it is walking with, uh, with some aid. We also um, programmed it to do some exercises, uh, crawl, and uh, we, we got a, a Wi-Fi control shield so that um, so we don't have to plug it into the computer every time we want to upload a new program. These are uh, a few of the exercises that I'm going to show you that, he, uh, that we programmed to do. This is the code. And I'm going to show you how it works. So basically, the servos are, uh, create a 180 degree movement. Right, so we had to, to calibrate it to be exactly in the middle for 90 degrees. Now for the code, the servos move to a certain position. As you can see, let's say that's uh, 150 degrees. It will move really quickly. If we want to make that, um, that smooth move, we have to create a variable and loop it. And every time it loops, the variable increases. Those are some of the exercises that we got from a, uh, a physical therapist. And a little hip strengthening exercise for Hector. Finally, we, we are programmed to walk. Now, we wanted it to walk with eight because that's how we picture a, a, a child would learn how to walk. And we decided to do certain positions that we thought were the main positions that Hector would. Obviously, later we, we decided to hide all the cables once the uh, programming was done. It looks much nicer and it, uh, it lowers the uh, risk for uh, injury. Thank you. Um, so, dealing with building Hector, we had to follow a couple standards. <coughs> One of the standards is uh, doing the same vocabulary that you see anything in dealing with robotics. Another standard is measurement units. You try to keep everything the same. So. SI and internet uh, and American units. Um, the IPC A610 is a very important book because it's pretty much how to wire everything together, how to go with Arduino Omega, how to make sure everything's connected with the servos and correctly. Yes, we use YouTube. YouTube is a great help, but that is more professional, more standard book that a lot of electrical engineers use. Um, the robot and robotics devices is very important because it's a book telling us what limitations we have between a human and a robot, the social interaction, that interaction between them that we have to be very careful with. For global learning, like you said, cost effective as you saw earlier, it's very important. We want to keep those prices as low as possible. It makes it easier for you to buy or you can go ahead and download, it's up to you. For accessible to families, like you said, Angel bought a 3D printer, he was able to print it at home. Maybe you have a therapist who has a 3D printer there and can print it there. It also depends on you, what's for you. We want you to have it at home, be able to use it with your child or use it on the therapist. <coughs> Open source, that's our main thing. You can sell schematics, our open source, it's for anybody. We want you to have it and have access to it and use it as much as you can. For future functionalities, um, as you saw the gyroscope, uh, keep balance. We're focusing right now on just gross motor movements. You can do more refined movements. With the more refined movements and motor skills, you have to do a more high level software, more coding, more deep into it. Um, you also have a force feedback that you can also do for possible work where you push Hector, but Hector doesn't fall because it has a gyroscope, but and it pushes back. Uh, action, reaction, with that. Thank you very much. <laughs> We'd like to open up for questions now.
a little example. We actually upgrade the uh, Arduino Mega to uh, nano size, so it will be better. It will be more like room efficiency inside the, the chest. Um, you can do anything with the Arduino with this platform. You can like upgrade more things, add more shells, and also, as we mentioned, we wanted to Hector to talk with an MP3 shell, but unfortunately, the Arduino um, doesn't make um, as many functions as we wanted. That would be sold using a Raspberry Pi, but um. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> uh, I have a couple questions for you. Uh, first, I wasn't quite sure is Hector uh, self-contained, so you don't when you just plugged it in. Uh, what so was that for? so it's not completely self-contained. Um, we have a Wi-Fi shield where we can read write programs to it from a, a library that we have. Um, so we issue it commands basically, and then it'll execute the program. In our in our case here, we already had a program loaded, so we just had to add power, and it's just going to run that one code. Uh, my second one is durability. Uh, with Hector, did you do any testing if Hector falls? <laughs> Hector has fallen a couple times. <laughs> Hector has fallen a couple times. But honestly, in um in this isn't designed to be thrown across the room by a child. This is <laughs> this is a, a rehabilitative tool. We're thinking um, this should be used by a therapist in front of a child or by parents with a child. It's not a toy. So that's basically we didn't we didn't design it for that purpose. It would have become a lot more expensive, definitely. But it, is, <laughs> it has fallen a few times and it's still in one piece. That's the beauty of an open source. You can modify anything you want. Also, during the 3D printing process, you can use different densities during the 3D printing, and you might make the components more tougher. And that might solve that issue. If, if you sold thousands of them, you could inject and mold those parts. Well, we never. <laughs> our intention was not to sell it. Yeah. It's not open source. So. Um, yeah, but. It would the price would go down with time, and another mm -hmm. factor that will contribute to lowering costs is three D printing is becoming so much more accessible. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, like what maybe yeah, ten years ago, it, a three D printer would have been twenty thirty thousand dollars. Now you can get one for three hundred bucks. So that's yeah, we're something we're that's really helping this become more uh, reasonable. Yeah, the price for the manufacturing that we uh, that we showed mm -hmm. was using Angel's three D printer, which is a tiny three D printer. Oh, so you have to three D print one part at a time. And it would take a long time, so um, so I guess we kind of saw it as a, like one side, like completely on like a worst side case scenario. Side, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. just through a three D printer, it might take less than less, less than half the time, and the yeah. price might decrease significantly. Like, would be less than half. Well, it's so cool. I think that it it could be one of those things that there's hundreds or maybe more made. You've got a lot of kids that could use a function like that. Mm -hmm. and we've spoken to a couple therapists, and when we tell them the idea, they, they go nuts. They actually really like it because um, it's actually more of an issue than even we thought. Um, children, even children who may not necessarily fall within the autism, the autism spectrum or have those disabilities, they're, they're intimidated by a stranger. And this tool is something that kind of makes them a little more comfortable or could, and will still demonstrate. I mean, we're not teaching them how to throw baseball with this guy, but you know, simple functions for someone who may have been in a car accident or who may have lost the ability to use a limb. Um, these are valid exercises, really. Yeah, I like the blinking eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. We can also display uh, messages to the eyes. Oh, right. Yeah. So, yes. it's up to whoever has to. How much time did you spend on this? A lot of time. Nice. Printing time was around <laughs> 140 <laughs> hours with my 3D printer, printer. <laughs> but I actually 3D print many of the components like multiple times. Five, multiple times. Some components would work, so we uh, have to. How much time did you spend? Not, not printing. Oh, um, okay. Um, I mean, the coding was really difficult because we're mechanical engineers and uh, we had to basically <laughs> learn how to program. But, but I think the uh, design took much longer than the uh, coding. The coding, we, we were able to do it in like. That's true too. In a weekend, we just I know did most of the coding. Time consuming part is design. But every design, part. Uh, because we, we went through a, a few designs. Actually, this is not even, we call it two designs, but it's two main designs. But within those designs, there's a 
redesigning of the leg. Um, at first, we uh, the legs weren't this wide. We, we wanted to hide the cable somehow, so we decided to make them bigger or wider. Um, so we are. Exactly. You know. Then uh, the question of how are we going to design the legs came up, and um, if you notice the first and the, if the the first design and second design are completely different in the legs. Even on the hip too, the hip and the legs are completely different. So that was a, a redesign. So I would say it took it took months. It was it was long. It was really fun. It was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was really but, but you didn't keep accurate time. You didn't turn a little time no, slip in. We, we Don't like you that. wish you had done that though? Just to see how. <laughs> most of the time, yeah. most of the time it was an overnight kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. three in the morning, just finishing. You wake up with Hector on your chest. You were working on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, mo most of the design was done by, uh, actually, almost all of the design was done by Angel in his solid works. So we decided to call him a uh, little Hector Mendoza. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how Hector got his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>